Well, my my computer says it's three thirty, so um, we'll consider that official. Everybody okay. will turn on stand and join me in the pledge of allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation, under God. Right. I don't know if I'm the only one that has a flag outside my window here across the street so I can stand and turn my back and look at the flag. So <laughs> all right, with that we need a motion to approve the minutes of our August seventeenth meeting. So moved. I second it. Well, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Carried. Reports, financial reports. Well, for August, you see, we <clears throat> actually, uh, our quarterly uh, billing was up about $4,000 from last year. So that shows a nice recovery. Um, we lost a little bit on the commercial sector, but we uh, offset that with residential uh, growth. And I should note that does not include the rate increase. So that's that's a real uh, increase in usage that we're seeing compared to last year at this time and, and at the end of August. Well, even industrial being just about the same. Yeah. You know, so we're pretty happy with that result uh, all in all here. Um, cumulatively for the year, we're still <clears throat> about $474,000 below uh, where we were last year in terms of billing for 2020. And again, a lot of that is due to this downturn earlier, March, April, May in particular. I doubt we're going to turn much of that around, uh, but we will, as of October 1st, have a rate increase in effect, and that will uh, re reduce that number a, a little bit for the, the remainder of the year. Uh, otherwise, the cash reserve is, is about where we anticipated and didn't uh, see anything else unusual to note. Our return on rate base is still positive. We're still looking just under two percent. So, any other questions? Any comments, gentlemen? None for me. All right. Is there a motion to approve the financial reports as presented? So moved. I second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. Carried. All right, Joe, superintendent's report. Well, I'll start with the operations <clears throat> department. <clears throat> and as we, we could see in, in the billing uh, for August, we pumped about 2% more water than August of last year. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> Otherwise, for the year, I don't have a lot else to note. Um, our water quality coming into the plant was, was pretty comparable to August of last year. Average water temperature about 53 degrees coming in. Um, no major changes in operations for August. In terms of maintenance and ongoing work, we had a lot of it as usual. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of checks head, heading into the, the winter season, especially on the remote pumping stations. Um, so we've been doing that. Uh, The maintenance on our backup generator in the plant. 
Um, we do most of that in house. We have one gentleman who was uh, is a trained mechan auto mechanic, so he brings a lot of expertise to our generator and motor diagnoses when those come up. Um, otherwise, just a just a wide variety of maintenance work done in the plant. I think for distribution, we had a busy month as well. A number of uh, water main projects done by contractors where we were doing the inspection and documentation work. Geely Avenue in particular. Uh, Maryland, Illinois, and South 11th as well. Um, Georgia Avenue standpipe uh, style water tower was taken out of service, drained, and it now is being stripped and, and repainted. Um, they've been focusing on the exterior because they were uh, worried about colder weather uh, and, and they're soon going to, well, they're going to try to finish that because on the interior they can use uh, heaters and such if the weather does get cold. Um, we posted some photos and got a lot of it, got uh, some attention on that because they're using a robotic system to strip and, and uh, they even have, as they're stripping it, they have a vacuum that sucks away the debris and then they also have a very quick way of priming the, the bare metal. So my understanding is the bare metal out there is, is not standing bare for much more than 30 minutes before they're putting a primer onto it. Um, <clears throat> so far we've had no kind of, uh, you know, uh, neighborhood complaints about debris or, or dust or primer being blown anywhere at all. It's going, going very, very well. <clears throat> and I think uh, the safety aspect is, is important because they don't have a person up there, you know, blasting and, and doing such. It's really just being controlled from a robotic unit. So that's been going very well. Um, that tank, when completed, will look like the other ones. It'll be the, the famous purple haze color, which is more like a dark blue. Uh, no logo on that. It'll just be... Uh, the paint and just kind of in perspective it's about a 20 year lifetime project so I think the way it's going um, I, I'm quite confident we're going to get 20 years out of this job uh, the last time that standpipe was taken there were some issues with priming adherence and it actually had to be redone in a fairly short amount of time so we're hoping to avoid that um, number of lead services that were removed. Those were in addition to the Geely Avenue project and some maintenance out in the field. No, no water main breaks for August. It's fairly typical that we don't see any in the warm months. And on the chart, you can see a number of new street valves that we have for uh, were uh, removed as well, a number of new fire hydrants, a few that were removed. And we had about 1,200 feet of new water main go in the ground for August. Um, that's pretty much the extent of distribution, unless there's questions on that. I have, I have just one question, Joe. Uh, I think it was last month, maybe the month before, I had asked about North Avenue just east of 31st Street. They had apparently done some work in the media in there. And um, one, of the, one of the people that drives there every day had made a comment about the fact that the, it looked like it was half completed. And I drove by there the other, the other you know, about a week, week and a half ago, and it still looks like there isn't a curb there. Or if, it, if it was, it was just some stuff that was kind of dumped there to make up a curve. It's in the, um, the eastbound lane, just north of 31st, or just east of 31st Street on North Avenue. 
East of 31st on North Avenue. Okay. Yeah. We'll check it out, Jerry. Off the top of my head, I don't know the status yeah. out there. And then one other question I had, as far as the, uh, the property we bought out um, behind the, the McDonald's and that stuff, and the, the, I guess the um, mall <laughs> near Burkhardt, uh, not Burkhardt, but Brandmeyer Ford. Are we yes. doing anything with that? I, I noticed a bunch of gravel or stone had been dumped on the, the entryway there. Is that just um, for our trucks to get in and keep people out? Yeah, we put down some breaker run earlier this year, <clears throat> and our goal is to get a driveway in there this season or early next season. Okay. And then we're planning to store some um, uh, road gravel and sand and material like that, kind of a, we, we put a drive in and then a little bit of a bend around so you can't really see it from the road. Mm -hmm. But we're hoping to store uh, trench materials out there uh, when we do have main breaks and such that we don't necessarily have to come back here uh, for sand and gravel and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. And moving into customer relations and fiscal, um, you'll see kind of a continuing trend of uh, fewer people at our pay our payment window. That's when somebody's coming inside and paying to a utility staff member. So that's about cut in half from last year. More Dropbox payments, some more electronic payments. Um, so we're kind of seeing that ongoing trend. Fewer calls coming in. Still quite a few account transfers. Those are usually, you know, people moving in and out of places, apartments, homes, <clears throat> those kind of things. Uh, we're still in the uh, cessation of our disconnection program per, per the state. We're not disconnecting water service. <clears throat> um, that does have an impact on collections, but you can see uh, we're not doing too bad. We build about a million dollars and we've got 91,000 outstanding at the end of the month. That's not, that's not horrible. Is that in, that's only the water? That doesn't include the sewer and all the other charges that are out there? That's only water, yes. Okay. Uh, cross connection inspections have picked up. These are again are done by our, our vendor out in the field. Uh, three leak allowances. And then you'll see we're starting to get <clears throat> a little more active with replacing water meters. Um, our social media, we had about 2,500 visitors to the website for August. And uh, I think the other big uh, note is that the uh, we did implement the mobile work order system. So our service techs or, or meters shop staff can now, um, I'm sorry, the uh, service, the support specialist in the office can now create a work order and electronically send it to the service tech in the field. In the past, this was almost all done with slips of paper. Uh, now they can enter it into their computer to the cloud and the service tech can access it in the field. They get their work orders by, by a, a phone and then they can complete the work and upload the data directly to the billing software. So that actually is a huge uh, step forward for us. Um, it's been in planning for a while, and in August, they were able to implement that. Um, there's more to come to, to build on the capability, but it really is uh, uh, just one more step to the efficiency of, of staff working out in the field and, and getting away from notes and phone calls and uh, you know sh information by paper. Um, also in August, we 
really implemented the, the module to track our lead service line replacement loan program. You know, that now is a whole new activity that we've added in house um, and, and have implemented where we're now initiating and uh, administering and tracking loans for lead service line replacement. So that's another big, big uh, additional piece of work that we're doing. I think that's about my summary for August, unless there are questions. Any questions, gentlemen? Not for me. Nor for me. All right. If not, we'll take a motion to approve um, those report, the superintendent's report. So moved. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Fair votes aye. All right. Moving on to raw water improvements. No update on that. Project. Yeah, I have a couple things to report. Um, we've had a, a lengthy preliminary design process, and at the end, the engineers came up with a uh, uh, engineer's best opinion of uh, construction cost, and the figure that came out of that process was $44 million. <laughs> okay. And that figure was well above our goal of about $29 million. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're now revisiting the, the plan set. And I, I should say that figure includes the 25% contingency right off the bat you know, which is $11 million. So that, there's quite a lot there on the table, but the figure is still higher than we, you know, need to be at and want to be at. So we've had a number of follow-up meetings. Um, one element that we're going to have to give up is uh, a second or emergency intake to go along with the primary. Um, that's about a four to five million dollar add-on, and we just can't afford that. So we're, we've now focused back on a very good primary intake, one intake pipeline, the means to add a second one in the future, but not under this construction. And then we would still have everything currently in service as backup. So I think that's a reasonable position to be in. And when all the numbers shake out, um, that was a pretty clear piece that we would have to drop right off the bat. Uh, that is a lot of cost. There's other elements. We've reduced the building size. You know, one of the things in the process, we got a lot of input and we added a lot of things and tried to kind of come to a what we really wanted and I, I think that's appropriate, but now we're, we're trailing back to what do we want and what can we afford and where do those intersect? So we're having to cut out things that, you know, would have been nice, like a, like a restroom in the facility and, and a bit more workspace and a few more amenities. So we're trimming the building size down. Uh, uh, reducing some of those amenities. We, we had located it closer to the existing facility, but that meant relocating a, an 84 inch storm sewer. And now we're backing off of that location, save the cost of relocating that large storm sewer. Um, you know, we're adding a little more distance, but I'm, I'm confident that cost is going to be a lot less than rerouting that storm sewer. So we're looking at uh, a lot of cuts in, in, you know, the first pass at a cost uh, estimate for the actual project. And I'm confident we'll get it, we'll get it down. Will we get it exactly to 29 million? I, I don't want to say I can guarantee that at this point. 
think it's important to remember that the 29 million came out of <clears throat> more of a financial assessment of what we thought would be uh, affordable under certain assumptions. And I think those are still valid, you know, but as we kind of come to a final project, you know, we may have to adjust that a little bit uh, here and there. It's always hard until you bid these projects, you don't know what the actual price is gonna be either. The engineers always try to be conservative and, and I think we're seeing some of that as well. Um, but the reality is that the first cost estimate came out much higher than uh, our target and we're now revising, trimming, cutting to get closer to the target. And our goal now is for the October board meeting to have a presentation from, from the engineers to reflect all of that and a little more of a final determination of, of where we are at. Um, one element as well in that is shoreline protection. And as we've seen <clears throat> higher lake levels and more concern about that, we had a figure in there of two to three million dollars just for shoreline protection. And that's an element where uh, Mayor Vandersteen has uh, been interested because as part of the Great Lakes Initiative, he's uh, become more familiar with the FEMA uh, brick uh, infrastructure program and, and they have a particular interest in uh, preventing shoreline erosion. So we've had some discussions with the people involved with the FEMA BRIC program and whether our shoreline protection for the raw water project might qualify. Uh, if it does, the grants pay up to 75% of the project cost. You know, so there again, if we're looking at two to $3 million in shoreline protection and a grant of up to 75%, that's a significant cost cut as well. Um, of course, they don't hand out these grants willy-nilly. There's a lengthy process to go through a risk-benefit analysis and, and things like that that we're looking at. Um, another element that we pulled out, we, we really feel that bidding the pipeline installation in, in the lake bed ought to be bid separately from the overall project. I think when we looked at that, we felt that a general contractor would just tag on a, a markup on, on the pipeline installation and, and just sub that out anyway. And we, we feel that's big enough and there are enough big pipeline laying firms that we can really bid that part separate from the site work and, and the pump station and the mechanicals on, on land. Um, so we've all, on the team look, looked at the project, proposed cuts, proposed ways to trim it down, and the engineer has done that as well. And again, my hope is that uh, for October, we'll have the results of that and we'll have a figure that's much reduced from 44 million, how low it will be, I don't know, um, but it will be closer to a more realistic figure for the project. Okay. And I think as far as the funding, we are, uh, our, the utility accountant has been uh, taking a first pass at the DNR Safe Drinking Water Loan Intent to Apply form uh, or application. Uh, she's looked at that, the operations supervisor, and, and I have looked at that. And uh, by the end of October, those, uh, that has to be submitted to qualify uh, for funding more than a year out. So that, that process is underway. Um, and again, we want, you know, realistic cost figures to put into that so that it's not, you know, way off of a, of a final project. Um, so that's my summary. You know, the financing aspects are being pursued 
uh, preliminary design is being reviewed again to cost cut to cut costs, and we're moving forward. Okay. Either of you gentlemen have any questions? I don't. Okay. okay. Moving on. Stonebrook Crossing Development Agreement. Um, here we have a uh, developer, Werner Holmes. Uh, they've owned some land on the south side for quite a while, and and they're now uh, ready to go forward with an, a subdivision uh, addition or beginning of a subdivision. There there are multiple additions later, I believe. Um, when there is new development, there are really two options for paying for the the water. You uh, infrastructure. One is to assess the properties and then we bid out the projects and have it installed by a contractor and, and assess the benefiting properties and go through that or else the developer can uh, uh, install the infrastructure on their own and pay for it themselves directly under a development agreement and Werner has uh, proposed to do that instead of assessment um, the development agreement includes every aspect of uh, water, infrastructure, sewers, uh, roads, and, and everything. So the, the signatories are the utility, the city, and the developer. And I, I guess for our part, it's basically just saying uh, that the developer is going to install water main you know, where we want it and, and the size we want it and for our design and inspection and specs. Uh, the only other aspect is that we might um, want a, a larger main going through the subdivision to be more of a, a transmission main from east to west in that area. And under local ordinance, if we want a water main larger than eight inches, then the utility has to pay an up, up uh, charge for that. So there's language saying that if we want, for example, a 12 inch water main, um, they have to bid out the project at the eight inch and the 12 inch, and the water utility would then pay the difference for the 12 inch water main if that's what we want. Um, so that is clarified in, in the agreement. And I should say the agreement was mostly drafted by the city attorney who sought input from us and myself, and I sought input from our distribution department. Um, so I, I believe the agreement is in conjunction with all water utility rules and regs, and, and I would ask for authority at the appropriate time to sign and execute the agreement. So it's not asking, they're not asking for us to sign it immediately? Uh, no, but it's coming. I believe it's going to uh, council later tonight, and it will be in fairly short order. Okay. And you're thinking that we will want to turn around and up, upsize that, that main? At least part of it, yes. And that's because of expansion to the south? Um, we have a, a very large main and highway OK, and we want to be able to move water uh, towards the east um, and eventually heading towards that southeast area in the future. Okay. All right, so... I would make a motion to um, give the authority to the superintendent to execute, execute uh, the Stonebrook Crossing Development Agreement. Sounds reasonable to me, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. And chair votes aye. Joe, looking at the legal description, this doesn't help me picture exactly where it is. Whereabouts is this property? See, 64 acres? 
Yeah, it's uh, to the east of Highway OK, south of Wheaton Creek, Creek Road. Um, let me see, I'm just bringing up my, my own map here a little bit better. It's uh, It'd be north of the, the Wilson Mutual Insurance Company. Yeah, okay. it's in that area. It's between right. Stall Road and Weedon Creek Road. So it's actually pretty close to the new industrial park. It is, yeah, it's adjacent yeah. to that. Okay. okay. Yeah, I can picture it now, thank you. All right. Did you take a vote? Oh, we did. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Approval of annual intake diving and cleaning proposal. We actually have so three every, huh? every year we uh, inspect and clean <clears throat> the zebra mussels off our intake pipelines, off the uh, entrance at, at the end of the pipelines. Um, Pretty much a manual process of, of using a, a underwater jet and scraping them off. Uh, we do like to visually check the intakes that they're not shifting, moving, anything like that, damaged or anything has, has gotten onto them. Uh, see, this year we have three proposals for the work. Uh, in recent years, United Underwater Construction has done the diving. They've been uh, very good to work with, very professional diving firm. And you can see they're quite a lot less cost than the other two that provided quotes at this time. That's almost, almost makes you wonder what the other companies were bidding on. Or if they want yeah. to But UCC is a good company. We work with them at three different power plants on the Great Lakes that I worked at, and they always provide a good service. And we've used them in the past, so. Mm -hmm. So I would, uh, prefer we proceed as, as suggested, work with UCC. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Nope, not me. I assume that's what you, you wanted, right, Joe? That's the recommendation, yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Mr. Scarborough votes aye. All right, moving on, we have the purchase meters or meter. Yes, we have uh, <clears throat> under the Homeland Security Act, hospitals must have two connections to water systems. And due to the location of the new hospital in Kohler, they are both wholesale co uh, connections to our system and they need a meter at those connections. So we had sized out their, their requirements to meet their flow capacity and such, and it came out to be an eight inch meter mostly to meet fire flows if they were to have a fire situation. So we need to purchase uh, under the wholesale agreements, the utility provides the meter and the wholesale customer provides everything else. Um, the cost of the meter does end up going back on the wholesale customer in our, in our rate structure. Eventually that's how the cost is recovered. Um, but we would like to install or uh, purchase that meter now as, as they're ready to install it and uh, some equipment that would go along with it. And then we also have some three inch meters for stock to purchase and some M25 standard five eighths inch meters for stock now that we're starting to install some, some meters. So we're talking a total of a little over $30,000. Yes. I would move to approve. Second that. Any discussion? All 
in favor say aye. 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 Fair vote sign. All right, Joe. Moving on. Any PSC code changes? I have none. All right. And we need a motion to approve the vouchers. Uh, did we yes. sign those already, Joe, and send them to you? Uh, the ones that, uh, yes, they were all sent to you, including some ones that we hadn't signed in earlier months. Okay. Well, I move that we accept the uh, vouchers as, proposed, as presented. I second it. All in favor say aye. 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 And chair will sign. Personnel review plans regarding our COVID-19 risk reduction. Well, that's ongoing. And I think as I much me mentioned last month, we're having more situations where a staff member uh, might have been in contact with someone who tested positive or a family member might have been in contact. Um, we're trying to respond to those in a uniform way if, if it's a firsthand contact, you know, like a, a husband and, and say that the, a family member had tested positive, we consider that a first uh, point of contact and, and we're still using a quarantine period in those cases. Uh, if it's a secondhand contact, you know, a family member uh, themselves was in contact with somebody who tested positive that would be more a secondhand contact. And there were being cautious, but we're not, uh, we're trying to look at the, the whole situation, you know, were people wearing masks, how long was it and things like that. We're handling those a little more case by case. Um, but we have seen in the last month, uh, several uh, first contacts and fortunately we have not yet had any utility staff members test positive. But we've had them um, quarantined, so. We yeah, have, and if, if we do have that first contact, we encourage them to get a, a COVID test at Prevea. Okay. Um, they don't have to, it's up to them. Uh, that can just tell us a little more information. Um, sometimes. If, if their test you know, comes back negative, then. Well, we still don't really know if this is that 14 day incubation period. Right. So we're pretty strong. If, if they had a contact with, first contact with somebody who tested positive, we, we go from the point of contact 14 days and we're pretty much holding to that. Okay. Regardless of if their COVID test comes negative themselves. But we haven't had any, an employee, a direct employee, test positive. No. Okay. Okay. And otherwise, we're, you know, just maintaining our, our current systems, and I think we're in in good good position to not have a lot of people go down if it were to affect a, a staff member. Because we're still alternating what who's in at what time or what days and things like that? Uh, we're doing that in the office primarily. Uh, the other departments have less uh, remote work capability and, and we're, we're uh, pretty much back to operating those departments more normally in terms of staffing. We have no problem as far as um, PPE, the equipment, the PPEs at all? No, oh, we're pretty well stocked. Um, a few city departments have, have been looking at buying these either ultraviolet or kind of spray misting disinfectant units, but we I don't really think we have a need for those, but uh, we, we do have plenty of masks and other protective equipment and uh, we're encouraging, you know, our policy is to be wearing those and I, I observe that people are wearing them. And I think uh, our staff response has been, been very strong in trying to reflect the utility's role as a public health entity as well. Good, good. 
All right. Any other questions for Joe on that topic? No, sir. Uh, no. All right. Next meeting. According to my calendar, we're looking at what, October 19th? Yes. That good with everybody else? Yes, sir. We're What was that, Tom? Works for me. Okay, okay. That should be fine for me. All right, next meeting October 19th. And next on the agenda is a motion to adjourn. So moved. I second it. And chair votes aye. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tom, good luck. Ah, thanks. <laughs> yes, You're a very, very good addition to uh, the board here. Your, yep. your thought process. So. And you as well, Joe. You with your family. Yep. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Prayers are with you, Joe. Thanks. With that, I guess we're done. Uh -huh.